to. Too. But that's their claim to fame. Order. We have a quorum, so I'll take a motion to approve the agenda and the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda and the minutes. I'll second. Move and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Rich. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. You? Good. Good. I'm just kind of <laughs> going to stay away from people for a while. Hopefully, right. I don't get symptoms. Um, so not much to discuss. Well, there is, but there isn't. As far as weather goes, guys are out plowing. They've been plowing all weekend. Um, the biggest thing I have for you is I've been, you know, still working on, I know we've got the county budget and stuff done, but still working on the DOT budgets and programs and um, met with WHKS last week. And of course, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to give you an update on where our bridge funding is at. Um, we met and there's a few bridges um, that we obviously need to get taken care of sooner rather than later. Um, one of those bridges is a is on the national bridge registry, but doesn't qualify due to low traffic count. So it's a bridge that needs to be fixed. However, and I think it could do, I think that one is one that we can put a box covered in, but um, it's not really so much getting it done, it's paying for it. So our HBP funds, our bridge funds right now are currently at a negative 143 borrow ahead. So we're 1.43 years borrowed ahead. We're allowed up to 4.5 years to borrow ahead in that fund. So sitting right now with the projects we have let, we can only borrow just a little over a half a million dollars um, today, I guess, to do any other projects. Um, the problem with that is, is that we only forecast, right now we're forecast only $165,000 for fiscal year 22. It's a 3% decrease from last year's funding. Now this is all based on last year's funding and it doesn't include the, uh, the new federal bill, which we don't know when that money is going to come. But so right now, I'll tell you that we've done in the last, since the summer of 20, and including the summer of 22, we'll have done or will be doing $1.2 million worth of bridge work. That's about an average of $350,000 per structure. So you can already see that that doesn't add up to our yearly funding of 165000 if we're trying to do a structure for 350000 so I've been trying to forecast our bridge needs and what we have for funding. And right now for the next four to five years, on top of our borrow ahead factor of the half a million sitting today, we can borrow a half a million, but we're going to need an additional 1.3 million just to do four or five bridges in the next five year program. And that is assuming that nothing that the costs don't increase substantially. However, I don't know what they're going to do. Some of these, a couple of these can probably be box culverts, but it doesn't include any of the local bridges like the one I just mentioned that doesn't qualify. So um, you can kind of see where the needs are for what we, what happens. And I still don't have the full uh, bridge report back from the structural engineers yet to know what we need to plan for. He, we just sat down and did immediate needs um, for bridges. So um, just, where I'm sitting right now in the forecast, you know, just to do the projects we have, and that's about one bridge a year, we're still going to need $1.3 million. So um, obviously we either need to figure out where to find the money or how to, how to, I don't know. Um, we can't not fix some of these bridges, but we just, I'm going to have to sit here and prioritize a little bit more on what we need to do, but um, just kind of telling you where the funding's at. And I haven't, I haven't looked at farm to market account yet. I spent a lot of time on the bridges. I guess the theory behind it is we can, nobody likes to hear this, but you can drive on a crappy road. It's hard to drive over a crappy bridge. So, um, but they're two different funds and I'll work on the FM funding here. Also, we've got till the April 15th to turn that program and budget in, but just wanted to give you an update on just kind of the forecast of the dollars and cents of things. So okay. nothing everybody likes to hear is that we don't have enough money because that's, everybody says that, but right now that's the nuts and bolts of where we're at and we can obviously move things around and that all assumes that the funding is kind of consistent too i mean hope we're hoping that funding increases but um you know we saw a three percent decrease this year and the more we fix things the funding is based on on square footage of poor rated bridges so 
as we fix things, the poor rated bridges decrease, so the funding decreases. And it's not like we want to hope that our bridges get worse so we can get more funding either. So we're just kind of, you know, I, I, I've looked at other county stuff too, but I mean, $165,000 a year in bridge funding <laughs> just doesn't satisfy the needs at all. So anyway, I thought I'd give you that bit of great information to ponder well, on. Man, so. if we said, you know, we had you put together a list of bridges here a while back. Anyway, we talked about using TIF funds for them. So when we use TIF, we kind of screw ourselves too by doing that, don't we? Well, yeah, we, we, we fix things well, and then the funding. Funny, then, by doing it. Yeah. It would take but, all our but, funding if we did that. Right. But then again, we don't, we can't, we can't not fix things because then no. we can't drive over stuff. So, I mean, it's, well, it's a, it's a damned if you do the damned if you don't. So yep. well, we're just going to, I guess we're just going to, to me, we just keep fixing things and finding the money to do it, whether the funding changes or not, you know, there, from what I understand, the, the new bill, the federal bill is going to have bridge funding in it for larger bridges so we will evaluate if there's competitive grants or something that we can get for that funding we'll evaluate that you know and try to get some of our bigger bridges fixed but just kind of an update on where we're at yep okay i appreciate it anything else um not that i can think of right now you guys have anything for rich okay i'll stick around if something comes up sounds good all right Ryan. That's a good word. So I got a couple of pictures here I'll show you. I really don't know if they're going to come in to do testing on the air quality today or what. Okay. They didn't call me Friday. Okay. Um, anyway, so the air handlers that are directly above where we did work, I had them come in and check them out just for dirt, dust, all that. Um, and they found a bunch of mold. So we're gonna test the mold and then whatever from there. But these are the, this is just the um, nice. the blower motor. And then this is the, um, so that's like the duct up in there. That's just a small little spot of it. And um, all that black is mold. So he looked up in there and he said it runs all the way through there. We checked the clerk's office. I don't think that one's as bad, but still has some in there. Mm -hmm. And it's all, what do you call it, like fiber board stuff. So you can either replace all the duct or they can go in and clean that, which they have to be careful when they clean it because it's fiber board. And then they can paint it on the inside to help seal it. but that's just basically a five to 10 year bandaid. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you have to put all new, new, in. new in to get, basically to get rid of it and to keep it from growing. Right. So, so do you give an estimate? No, he's going to, he was going to write something up and do that. I don't know if okay. he was doing that on Friday. I thought he was going to come up and take Test. samples, but yeah. I didn't hear from him. So I'll call him today, but he's going to give me, two separate one for these two and then one for the clerks we have to do three tests and since the two up here uh have the same return we're doing one test there one test in the clerks and then one test in his office because okay. you have to do three anyway so why waste one because we get the whole facility looked at your test so, anyways yeah so the whole building will basically be covered but those are the and I can send you those pictures and email to or whatever, but yeah. that's just off a really small, small, small camera right. that he stuck through there, but um, gives you an idea of what it probably all looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so get the samples taken, see what it is, and then get the estimate on what it's going to cost to yep. basically clean them. And, uh, so, for now. so hopefully one day this week they'll have that for me. Okay. Yeah, shoot on email or shoot emails up to us, I guess, so we can kind of keep up on it. Yep. Okay. Go from there, I guess. Thanks. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, drainage plans. So, you guys have any questions on this? I don't have any questions. Yeah. Let's take a motion to approve the drainage plans. Motion to approve drainage plans. So, second. No, second. Who's in second? Any further discussion? 
Your vote all say aye. 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 Motion carries. You got a call, John, or is he coming? Yeah. Yeah. And now phone is. Okay, so we got that figured out. Right? Yep. Okay, five one five. Nah, you gotta get nine first. Oops, oh, nine, nine one five one five. And you can leave it on the hook. Oh, but you had to pull it off to hit speaker. Nope. Um, okay, one. Nine, oh yeah. Get you there eventually. Nine, Nine to get out. Yeah. And then, and then one. one. Yeah. Four six zero. Nine six nine nine. Don't use those much anymore. John. Hey, John. Morning. Hang on, we gotta get the volume up. How about that? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We go. Yep, we can hear you. I haven't used it for six months. <laughs> yeah. DD11, what's going on? Uh, so we are getting close to filing that. We're getting through the last of the, the schedules. There's there's a lot of them. And so one thing I wanted to, to touch base with the board on so that you're aware of kind of how we were going to do it. Uh, we're going to try to break it up into to sections so that we don't have to send notices for the entire district to everybody in that district. Okay. Um, gotcha. we, we've got the main schedule, which everybody would have to get. Yep. But then we have some big laterals to the south that we could split off so that just those lanes down south would get those schedules and not everybody north and vice versa. And, and um, that's how we're going to do the report to try to break up those notices. But then the question comes with the hearings as we get into that. Are we going to want to do everything all the same day? Because it's really all the same information. But then we're looking at I don't know, 45,000 acres worth of landowners or so yeah. uh, all being in one place at one time and I would and at least at least six different district hearings um, I, I guess part of what I, I want to talk to you guys about is do we want to take that risk and just try to do it all as one big ordeal have everybody in the room at one time and we can try to get it all knocked out as one shot or do we want to try to break this up as much as we can to uh, keep the meetings smaller? Might want to break it up. That's um, what I'd recommend too. Otherwise, I was going to say we got to switch to a bigger venue and maybe yeah. go to like Kensett or something. Yeah. Like because or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would do it if you got it sorted out in, in five or six different sections. Six. Let's do it a section at a time. We'll just space the meetings out yep. over the day. Okay. It'll take a whole day to do it, but that's fine. Except for how much overlap okay. you have. You're going to have, only... you're gonna have well, some landovers overlapping. But... Yeah. There's a lot of overlap. Uh, everybody will be in, in the DD11 main. Yep. Um, and maybe we do that one last. We can do all the smaller sections, on you know, break them up into sections so not everybody has to be there. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about what the main will look like and approve that at a separate hearing at the end. And so hopefully at that point, people have already seen it. They know what it is. They're not going to be surprised by it. And you're not going to have as many people show up for that one. Right. I think that could work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would um, do. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, as we get closer here, I'll get Jackie the information. And we'll start trying to sort out timing and, and whatnot on, on how to, to break those up. Okay. Um, I know she did ask about DD 13. And I um, forgot that was in there. 
Yep, that is in there. That will be done here shortly. And that's actually one because it's a separate district. We could pull out and do that separately early okay. just yeah. to get it over with. That would be good so um, that we can assess. And she also, yeah. So I think that one's actually pretty much done. I'll talk to Alex to make sure that that's done, but we should be able to get that one knocked out pretty quick. Okay. Um, and then DD 40, was it 46? Yeah. That nine. Uh, Jacob is looking to have that done here at the end of the month. Okay, good. So, so that said, with all this reclass, we do need commissioners appointed. And so I don't, I don't know if you can do that today's meeting or we want to wait here. It's not quite ready yet. Um, and I can get you a full list, Jackie, I'm, so you, you know exactly what districts need those commissioners. But uninterested um, landowners, do need, right? Yeah, so essentially we're looking at somebody from the southwest or, uh, well, yeah, more or less the southwest half of the county. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't, again, that doesn't need to, need to be today, but that is something that needs to be so, at least in the back of your mind here coming up. And so if like we could, two of those, if possible, or? have the same commissioners for all of them, it, it'll help speed up everything. Is it two? It's two. Okay. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Time again. Again. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing. It's, it's good it thing. needs to be done, but it just yeah. it's a lot going on. John, while well, we got you on the phone yeah. uh, updates. Yeah. What about DD 14? Uh let me talk to Jacob over here. Hold on just a second. All right, I got Jacob here. Um, Jacob, the board is asking where we're at on D14. We plan to survey it as soon as we get up there when the frost comes out. Okay. Early spring. And that's where we're at with it. Um, we got a couple other projects ahead of us, including 72 mm -hmm. in North County, the ditch, and DD2, the ditch. Mm -hmm. Both of those we're working on. Okay. Now. All right. I've just been. I did. Sorry, go ahead, AJ. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I've just been getting some inquiries about it. Just kind of curious where it was at. So, no big deal. Yeah. Uh, I had gotten a phone call from one of the landowners that was suing the railroad. <laughs> or, or not suing, but there was a failure of the pipe under the railroad, and his attorney called, and they were asking about how they could, how any leverage or anything they could apply to help the district. So I know that um, the landowners there are thinking about it, and they are trying to find creative solutions. So um, we have been talking to a few up there to try to get something worked out to either get the the permits for that. Uh, at least waived or no cost, things like that that can save money for the district. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? No, I talked to Jacob oh. the other day. So. I talked to Mark yesterday. Yeah. And we're planning on filing 72 then this month. Okay. That small ditch there taken over. Yep. Yeah, and D2, the planning should be done here in the next week or so, it sounds like. Yeah, I'm going to report this winter. Okay, yeah. So, so D2 report should be uh, hopefully February. Uh, plans are more or less done at this point, then we'll get the report done. So, uh, that will be coming up fairly quick as well. Okay. Sounds good. Ready for a month long. Get her done. 
Yeah, we'll be, I haven't seen you guys for a while. I think we'll be seeing you a, a fair bit here for yeah. a time, I think. Sure. Okay, sounds good, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Talk to you later. All right. Claims. <laughs> Some claims. Quite a few, I guess, right? Yeah. Really. Behind a week or whatever, aren't we? <laughs> um, <laughs> right not now. really. Oh, we didn't do any last week. Yeah. We did, any last week. did we? Yeah. Sure. We did. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not been much last week. Yeah. <laughs> any questions on the claims? The dollar amount isn't much, but there sure are a lot of them. I don't know. Take a motion to approve the claims. I'll move to approve claims. Is there a second? No, second. Okay, any further discussion? No, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion will carry. Ports. Move on. Sheriff, monthly, quarterly, court report, reporter, and uh, a motion to approve the report. A motion to approve the report. So, sorry, I'll second it. Further discussion? None. All in favor say aye. Okay. Any sign you go? Payroll. Nope. The demons to law enforcement today. Um, today is Grafton's and Hammond. Okay. Annual increase. So. Take a motion to approve the amendments for Grafton and Helen Town. I'll make that a motion. Is there a second? I will second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion will carry. Appointments. Get me. Going to get any appointments for these boards? Okay, so we have an economic interest person for NIACOG, so like a business person or whatever you want to. Um, one economic or one eminent domain person, and that's just a person, just somebody having um, knowledge of property values. And then uh, I talked to Andy Helgeson. And he would like to step off of the NIACA revolving loan fund. Okay. So we need to find another banker for that, which I, I, mean, I don't know if we've ever asked the guys in town or not, if they're interested or not. Maybe Andy, Joseph, or somebody like that, maybe. Okay. Does it need to be a Worth County resident? It has to be a resident, mm -hmm. not just a banker that works. In mm -hmm. Okay. So we probably asked Jeff down at Manly, but he's, I don't believe he lives in the county. Somebody down there. But yeah, he don't, he don't live in the county. Okay. So. Aaron? Yeah. Aaron? Carmen, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Him and Andy and... Chad. Yeah, Chad and Elsa, yeah. yeah. They stay pretty busy, but That's you can at least cool. check. Well, I'm sure Chad, I'll check Chad's on everything. <laughs> right. But fair yeah. Word and yeah. Bacon and pharma. And yeah. Yeah, we can meet that often. But... Yeah. You're going to ask one of them. Yeah. Start with them and work our way down. That's all we can do. Okay. Where's your homework? Oh, it's, is it snowing again? Yeah. Blowing pretty good. It's yeah. supposed to snow and blow next couple of days. Good. Um, a business person. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. About that one, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You're going to ask those bankers? I'll talk to um, Chad. Start with him, yeah. Yeah, see if he'd be interested or not. I don't know how, I mean, did Andy say, I don't even know how often they meet on that revolving loan or if it's just more or less emails. Of, as needed, probably. Yes, yeah, applications think come needed. in. They just they basically get emails of all the info and the info comes in. But okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and talk with Chad today and see if he's interested. Limited domain, just thinking on that, be a landowner or something. Yeah, basically. Anybody with you know land knowledge. Okay. Okay. All right. We will ready fuel of Iowa. Supervisor's letter of support. You guys saw that letter. I emailed it out last week. Went to Jeff Grieve, went to John Danos. Um, they're kosher with it, basically just showing the support that we would like to give, uh, possibly give Ready Fuels on their project on a family. Um, all of that obviously is determined um, later on when we update or renewal plans and actually get an agreement with them. But, but uh, yeah, I said both attorneys approved it. So if you guys are in favor of Supporting this project, that's why it's here. Both in favor of supporting it, I guess. Yes, I am too. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the uh, letter to support, letter of support to Ready Fuels for their project. Is there a second? I'll second it. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion will carry. Melissa, you on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, last week we met with IADAG and WCTA and Heartland Power. Um, they brought up uh, a company that is interested in doing a full um, illustration for the interchange. So I followed up with uh, the president of that company and he gave me the timeline it'll be about four to six months before it's complete but he should send me the scope of his work and um, a couple of other things within the next couple of weeks so when I get that I'll forward it on to everybody and then Wednesday we had our advisory board meeting um, we had NICOG there and uh, there was a lot of participation and it was kind of exciting to see everybody interact with everybody um, it was almost two and a half hours long <laughs> So thanks, Enos, for coming to that. And then Friday, um, I, as well as Beth and AJ, sat on a call with Ready Fuels to explain some different programs. So I've got some information requested from them. And then um, if they can give me that information back, we can better have a projection for the company. Okay. That uh, drawing deal, did, did you say that Heartland and WCTA were going to cover the cost of that, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, that sounds like that. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah, and this guy would also be interested in maybe doing a building if there's tenants. Is that right? I believe so. It is a it's a company that does investment as far and as and construction. Yeah, that's kind of what I took away from there, dude. You know, but. Kind of want to get a master plan going, I think, for what we want to look at and how we want it to look out there. So, and kind of keep it in a tune of the theme, a little bit of the casino, I think, or a little bit of rural Iowa type of look. Lots of flashing lights. Yep. <laughs> more flashing lights. <laughs> yep. No, more rustic, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But flashing lights, yeah. of course. But yeah. Light the area up a little more. So, but uh, yeah, it was a good meeting. Um, I sat in there with Melissa on that. And, uh, they definitely got some knowledge of this. He's done quite a few projects throughout the state, uh, different areas, different towns, uh, you know, small storefronts like that. And, and uh, 
has some good good concept drawings there for us to look at and so kind of excited to see that and hopefully get that site moving out there so mm -hmm. it'll be good stuff so thanks melissa you bet and tomorrow i'll be in des moines at a renewable fuels summit okay so i'll be out of the office all day okay sounds good be careful some cold yeah i'll try <laughs> You blow down there anyway, that's for sure. All right. Is Chris on today? I didn't see nothing, so. No, I did. Jackie sent an email with uh, yeah. some of uh, it's PFOS testing. Right. And uh, so it, what it is is EPA is looking for these, basically this stuff in the water. They haven't found any in this area yet. They okay. did. Uh, they tested St. Ansgar and they came back clean. They have found some in Eastern Iowa. Um, but it, if you read that, that's it's all paid for by EPA and like DNR is the ones doing the testing. Okay. But the, hopefully, we'll stay in that trend because the tests that they take are about three hundred dollars a piece. And if we so if we get into that threshold and we get stuck doing that probably quarterly. Three, three three tests, tests minimum, I think. Bucks so it could cost another four to five thousand dollars a year if we end up. So hopefully we'll stay in that trend of, of what they're seeing in this this region. But they were doing 100 and 140 some different facilities throughout Iowa. So what are they looking for? It's uh it's uh, bacteria the name is about yay long. Oh. It's basically byproducts associated with farm mm -hmm. chemicals. Um, and so they're, that's what they're looking for. Um, like I said, they found like two places. They've already done like a hundred places around and, it, and it's, it's in Eastern Iowa is where they're finding it. So basically if they don't find any here, then they'll leave us alone for a while and they'll come, you know, come back and check it. But as of now, it's just a very expensive test and hopefully we don't get stuck right. with those requirements. Gotcha. I didn't so, know if it was a solicitation or if it was something no, we had to do or no, it's from EPA and I'll I can talk to Chris, but he should know about it. Um yeah, because it would it would go to, to them as the operators and then the DNR would be involved with it too. So the DNR will be contacting them to do all the testing, I'm sure. So so hopefully with a little luck, we'll uh, stay underneath that threshold too. Okay. This week. Yeah. Um, department heads. Joel, you've been in for a while. Um, I sent an email out to everybody. Uh, we've got a, a, an alert situation with the Ukrainian-Russian conflict. Uh, if that escalates, they're probably thinking the Russians will come and, and hammer us pretty hard if we step into it. Um, so I'm just asking everybody to, to be more aware. Um, we're, you know, we've got the new firewalls in place, so you know we're not looking bad, but you know it only takes one. Uh, the phone system, we were kind of hoping that, that would, uh, the public health technology grant money would take care of that, but we found out that that can only be spent for public health, so we can't uh, use those funds. Um, you know, I, I had the money earmarked anyway, so I think we'll probably be moving forward with that project here in the next couple months, along with uh, the multi-factor, I've been putting that off, but we'll probably have to do that sooner rather than later. So yeah. I'll let everybody know on that. And the website, or are we going to hold off on that? Um, it's up to you. I mean, if you want to pull the trigger on it, um, I think we're, I'm good to go anytime you want to do that one. I I'd think. be willing to put money on that. Yeah, I think it was 14000 I think, was the, so we're, we're talking about, right, currently we're with Municipal CMS for our website. Right. They've been doing our website for, yeah, 10, 12 years, probably. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, Neapolitan has come in and given us a quote and a demo, and they're currently doing Jackie's election lap, uh, mm -hmm. website. And it's it's really user, good user user yeah. friendly, very user friendly. It's uh, it, it's quite a bit newer technology than what municipal CMS currently has. So 
Um, I think uh, Jackie and I kind of made the decision that we're probably going to go forward and make the switch to those guys. Marion County has them right now, and it's a, it's a really nice website. Um, so we're probably going to make that jump here in the next couple of months. You guys won't see much. Uh, a big difference will be, I think, it'll be easier for independent uh, departments to actually update their stuff. If they want to. So it doesn't, they can update and it doesn't all have to filter through you if they just want to put a notice out on there, then it's... They can do it right now. I mean, okay. there's some departments that do it right now themselves, but it, it's kind of a clunky process, mm -hmm. AJ, which uh, Neapolitan makes it very easy. And it's, yeah. it's, if you can run a Word document or something like that, or email, it, you know, you can do care of this stuff. And the reports coming from those folks are uh, pretty good, pretty good reports. You know, right now we're just using Google reports. Uh, you know, for visits and things like that, um, where Neapolitan actually will, you know, they'll uh, present reports to your or uh, download, you can download reports for those guys as far as traffic and you know, with that kind of stuff. So, well, yeah, I think probably next couple months. There's a, there's a process involved with that. We'll have to get some part of those together. No, no, yeah, we're kind of bored right now. So. Um. <laughs> Yeah, right. Something like that. <laughs> and like I said before, we're still having issues with uh, uh, supply chain as far as technology purchases go. You know, there's not a lot to be purchased at the moment. Um, but I know Jesse's going to replace all her, uh, you know, desktops with laptops uh, just because of that grant money that's there. Well, plus the software updates have pretty much been mandated to her. Yep, with RAM going away and moving to the new you system. Can't do paper anymore. You got to do electronics. And that's we're having a demo tomorrow with those folks. And I've got some. I've got some questions about what uh, what underlying technologies they need. Um, just to update you guys. I don't know if you heard that Tyler is trying to push everybody to cloud. Yeah, I think he told us this once. Yep. yep. They're wanting to push everything to their cloud on AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Um, I had a discussion with uh, the sales rep uh, last week. I was supposed to be on. You were supposed to be. It's okay. I, yeah. I'll give you a pass. On that. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Um, and right now, anything new they develop, new modules, will be on their web only platform. We will not get those. But everything he was talking about was nothing that we would be interested in. So for the time being, we're going to stay status quo and keep everything on the premises. Um, probably when we refresh our storage here in the next two, three years, we might look at seeing the cost uh, benefits of, uh, of maybe, you know, moving them to, uh, to the AWS platform. <coughs> but it's going to cost more money. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Wait, why can't we go back to paper? <laughs> you go right ahead, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy the tablets. There you go. <laughs> but that's all I've got. Okay. Sheriff, sure, you have any? Teresa was asking there from the reporter's office, FEH, and uh, I guess this past month is really highlighted why we need to continue yeah. these discussions and move ahead. Um, probably need to get through the urban renewal stuff here first, and then we need to be. Well, and I did shoot an email to John Danos. Okay. Just to see, you know, because that that nine hundred thousand and that um, that addendum or whatever from FEH, that's what kind of scares us. Yeah. And I kind of thought, wouldn't you have to have financing in place and stuff like that before you commit to something like that? I personally, so, I would think so. So I'll see what he what his what answer is answers. on that. And okay. I, I would guess, you know, it'd be better. You know, instead of continuing to amend the urban renewal right. plan, it'd be kind of nice to... to do a bunch at once. Right. Yep. But I'll just have to see what works out. Yep. And that's yep. what, when with any discussions I've had with John, that's what we're trying to do is is update it so we can include um, X incentives down at Manly. We can include uh, tipping of a new or a Freeborn okay. County wind project. And then we can also do this, do it all at once instead of doing multiple, multiple ones where it costs us probably five thousand a time to do it. You know, do it, do as many as we can in one shot, and get this all incorporated to what we want to do. What we we want to do. What we need, need to do. Yeah. 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 It's not a want anymore. No, it's getting <laughs> beyond. Yeah. We got. We we have to do something. Something has to be done. Yeah. 
We're jumping on the grenade, but we got to jump on it and go to two. So I'd rather see it in a non election year, but I don't really care. I don't know if any difference. No. It's, it's, it's been coming for the last how many years, and it's been, I don't well, want to say kicked down the road, but it's been. But, well, that boiler, we just cross our fingers every yeah. year, basically, and yeah, nurse 19, it along. 1950 or 51. Yeah. Like that's what the hey, house told. You learn new stuff. That's what I was down here looking at. That's what they said. I think that was on the tag or something. Nice. So, uh, Back when they made them. Yep. Thank you. Is there any warranty left? I kind of <laughs> yeah. you work on that, Jack. <laughs> I, I doubt it. There was a question. Oh, you can like, get that. I probably missed that call on the extended warranty. Yeah. Oh. There was a question. Is Brian turning that off today? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, to maybe clean the, the traps, traps or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was happening. It is warmer, but it's windy, unfortunately. But are you, hopefully it fires back up because you're, you're going to want it tomorrow. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Larson, but yeah. bring back the electrical ones. All right. We'll kick them on. I mean, you know, we got the cords yet, so so we're good to go that way. So yeah, okay. Uh, supervisor weekly then. Yes. Well, we all went to the Work County Farm Bureau meeting, and there was quite a discussion about the ambulance service. They had a lot of questions and AJ did a good job of answering them. Yep. Um, I also, we went to the group benefit partners yep. and we'll cross that bridge down the road. We kind of got an idea of what we're doing there. The biggest thing, <clears throat> the, the neatest deal was no longer have to fax the forms in. Oh, for the health thing. Yeah, yeah. They're picking up the codes and yep. documenting it themselves. Because that was a mess. What? For a wellness oh. program? Yep. So you go and do your physical, you don't have to fill out the form anymore. No longer nice. faxing that in. Nice. No. They just pick up the code, attach it to your name, and go, oh, they did their physical and off you go. Well, that's what he said. Anyway. Well, they're, they're, they're taking yeah. care of it on their end. Yeah. Because it gets coded through the insurance billing, which so they understand. know and then you went in for an annual physical and they will just send that off. So you no longer have to ask your doctor to yeah. 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 fax it in, waste their time. That'll some, make it a lot more simple for people to do. Yeah. The There's some doctors. Wanted to charge twenty dollars to do that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my wait, gosh! No, it's kind of like another office school. I mean, right. They got to do a sign of form. Yeah. 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 In your school. world. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so. Well, uh, mine signed it. I don't know. <laughs> mine did too. Yeah. yeah. I had Winworth Betco, like Melissa said, the advisory board meeting. Yeah. Myrtle Nelson was there and went through this whole brochure on what's available to cities and counties as to how the different things that they can help us with and the things that they uh, can write for us. And uh, it was quite interesting. The one thing she did bring up, she made sure that the mayors and the county people knew about that was the ARP funds up to 10 million. You don't have to document nothing anymore. Uh, it I just has to be <laughs> uh, I'm there. There's still stuff we have to do. But you don't have to prove it with the paperwork. You know, before no, like, you don't have to justify but you make sure you gotta make sure you send it. You, you spend it on county or city government. It has to be for project, but she she said any place you wanted to, and to make sure I was right on this, I even called down there on Friday and double checked for their supervisor. Mm -hmm. So look into it because it's supposed to be simpler. Anyway. It's supposed to be a lot simpler for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and the other thing that we did was we decided to take all the board advisory board terms to three years instead of two and three where we had them offset and then offset the years. Mm -hmm. So they all went to three years. And uh, Terry Derby did bring up about the windmills over in Winnebago County where they redid some of them and he said they didn't do redo the base or anything. And they came in and it started uh, over. Wanted to start over on them again at zero for tax money, and he said that they've gotten in touch with the legislature. So, and they're not the only county that this has happened to. I guess Story County it's happened to, and there's some other ones out there too. So, he just wanted to make sure we were aware of that. Because they have some that were only a few years in when they repowered them. I mean, like a year or two, actually, a couple of months. That scares me. Well, they took what they had, I think, at the time, and then they had the ability to upgrade them right away, so they did. Mm -hmm. Went from like 1.5s, 2.5s, whatever. But, 
I'm not exactly sure on it, but I do remember them doing that over there. And at that time, when they did it, they didn't know how it was going to turn out. Then they must have, yeah. They would like to stay at 30%. The windmill companies, of course, would like to go back to start starting over at zero, which would affect their debt service. Yep. Because mm -hmm. yep. it was going to make quite a difference on the one school system. Yeah. So he kind of relayed all that information to us too. So, yep. so that's all I had. Yep. Brian said later today for the boy. Okay. Larson. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Hey, Dave. They had the uh, Farm Bureau meeting. It was very good, very informational um, with the EMS service and a little discussion on the on the zoning possibility of zoning and that kind of thing but um very very good i I'm, i walked out of there happy that they're gonna hopefully look and help to support the ems service they're all relays that's that's a need so um and then i had uh conference called melissa and the ready fuels folks on friday um melissa threw a bunch of homework at them basically so we can get a Try to get evaluation figured out on that facility and what it's going to actually generate for taxes and that sort of thing, and um, so they're they're going to get that stuff taken care of sure. and uh, get it back to Melissa, anyways. Uh, but they're uh, something like they're ready to move ahead on everything. Uh, so hopefully we can keep going that right direction. This letter of support will help them on their next steps. So. Um, Did Terry Derby get a hold of you about yeah, Terry. County or Yeah, I didn't sure. know if you were able to attend. They're working together with us? Yes. Yeah, they yeah, they're wide. having issues over there of Same. of uh, keeping them open and yep. and getting the help. Um, right now, Four City is uh, short on paramedics, and they're not allowing their paramedics to work overtime. Yep. So they cover um, a good portion of the county just out of that service. Well. If they don't have paramedics available, then Lake Mills is without a paramedic um, because there's an EMT service. And so they're they're really trying to figure out what to do. Um, I know they're having some issues in Buffalo Center and Thompson, and they want to keep, they were trying to find a way to fund them a little bit to keep them open, keep them going. And the big thing is kind of the recruitment and retention of people, new and existing body. Um, so they're they're really struggling with it too, and they with, with four different services in, in the county, and they're still having a hard time. So he was wondering if it was there's any possibility of a joint venture, and I don't know how that would work. Uh, because the area is so spread out so far, and then I don't know how that would work with with the legislation of how it's all paid for, you know. Um, so and they they had a meeting the other night. He wanted me to go too, but I had. Uh, yeah. Fire department trustees meeting, so I couldn't make it. But um, so I don't know where they ended up or what they're thinking. But I know they're really trying to figure something out because Four City told them basically if uh, they were gonna assist with all this, that they wanted them to take over, like the HR, or like everything. everything. So because they're they're just struggling and having a heck of a time with it. So I think it's worth talks, but I mean, you know, I don't yeah. know where it's going to go because right. we do on both sides of the county. We're always going to have some. Every every county's going to have a fringe area. It's going to be tough. Yeah, and that's struggle, where we got to, so. you know, be cautious too because we were hoping to keep uh, those guys. Like miles in Four City and yep. utilize at least yeah on that county. portion yeah. of the county because there's residents over there that would feel better that the ambulance two miles away from their house would would be better than. Uh, that coming from Kensett or whatever, whatever we did in the future. So it's it's one of those things, I guess, where yeah, we gotta have a talk and see if there is something we could do mm -hmm. joint wise or not. But okay, um, that'll obviously be coming down the road, I'm sure. So right. otherwise, that's all I have. Okay, um, I basically sent in the Farm Bureau and and. Uh, insurance meeting and then I also did talk to Terry that's what I was asking there and, and uh, met with Melissa and IDAG and those and had a good meeting there so that was kind of my week okay
next week. Any uh, agenda items we need to add? We do have, uh, we have uh, Madam Brian. Yeah. Just yeah, and I just, I figured that was a. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. Right. If you want to go now, Come, on, ready? Come yeah. on in. We're ready. Otherwise, yeah. First off, just after a discussion with Jackie, I just made a quick list of its various steps and it just makes it look more complicated than it is, but have you guys looked through that? I did say email. Okay. I see see Murrow on it. Sure, it's your recliner reading. You might be in charge of it. <laughs> so, first off, I will apologize for giving you information you've already had, you know, throughout the years. And so, some of this might be uh, redundant, but first off, it's, in my opinion, it's a necessity to do countywide or wind turbine countywide. You need zoning countywide. Wind turbine regulations are technically zoning in a sense. So uh, in the legal realm, so not in my profession, but in the legal realm, you can't really, it's discrimination against other land uses if you're regulating or discrimination, you know, regulating one and not other land uses. So that's where we get into that issue. So if the county basically decides to uh, adopt the zoning ordinance, starting with the planning zoning commission, NICOG can, we do have a contract from uh, NICOG to do all the maps and charts. So we can have the zoning maps underneath that. My recommendation is that just for public use, just so the county's not getting a bunch of crazy questions where they can't understand maps. And most of us can read maps easily, but then a lot of the general public cannot understand a simple map. So basically just have per township and I assume most individuals in unincorporated area understand which township they live in. That could be wrong. They just have it that way. So if they request a paper copy, they come to the county, get it of the proposed the draft, and then uh, they go that way. And then also Jackie was just concerned about public feeling like they're not represented or, so the law doesn't say you have to have people from, you know, individual townships. Does that all be from unincorporated if it's countywide zoning? In there. Just a uh, general, some of this is not the state code. It's just a uh, good practice in the planning realm. But another thing that May have wrong. Worth County has, doesn't have the list of the current commissioners on there when their terms expire. So it'd be a good practice to do that. And just uh, if you have an application process, list the appointment process just for the current commissioners to reapply when their terms end or for new individuals to apply. So basically, the whole process here and how the state code its goal is basically just not to let the public you know, feel like they're not heard. So you want to give them the maximum opportunity to for uh, hearings, protests, appeals, when it comes to issues like kind of wide zoning, which can be controversial. So I'm not here to say, you know, pros and cons about zoning, all you guys know that. So, so basically NICOG can create, prepare the drafts. I know I have the parcel data, so it's easier to do now and then tweak it. And then uh, once the planning zoning commission members are comfortable, they can send the, uh, or schedule, you know, the planning zone, the uh, hearing, and then you know properly notice and then that's when it would come in where this is kind of be treated like a rezoning but when it comes to county so small towns is more relaxed when it comes to county you want to send a letter to each property owner you don't want to take shortcuts and otherwise it comes back and it haunts you if you do any shortcuts so basically you want everyone to be and then know that the county is considering this planning zoning so planning zoning commission will be taking up the burden would not fall on you supervisors. So unless we talk about this right now in the supervisors meeting, the better most of it's shifted to the planning zoning commission. And they, uh, once they're comfortable with it, then they recommend obviously to you guys for approval after a public hearing. So what else else we have on here? With letters we talked about, recommendations. And then obviously when you guys are ready to schedule a public hearing. And I, for that process, I don't believe you send a letter out for the supervisor's public hearing, but in the initial letter, you say that the supervisors will be, the plan is for supervisors ultimately vote on it. So that's, and then uh, through the whole process, just want to stay focused just on countywide zoning, basically yes or no. You don't want to start getting into changes, amendments. You don't want to start getting the wind turbines, salvage or all those other issues. You just want to then 
basically tell the public and the planning zoning commission members uh, responsibility would be to keep them on topic and politely say if they're off topic to stay on topic. Basically, any amendments, updates to zoning ordinance will be done after uh, the adoption on countywide zoning using your current zoning ordinance. It sounds more complicated than it is, but I, I believe it's pretty easy. Not too much of a headache, except for the letter. I don't, I'm not involved in the you know, administrative part of the counties, but sending letters out to property owners. You know. And the IPA can help draft that letter, but otherwise it's pretty you know, straightforward. Any concerns, questions? And then I am meeting. We do have the, you know, working on the maps and the charts for planning zoning. I, I sent, uh, Jeff sent me the agenda. I didn't look at it for next week for the meeting, but I'll be giving them all their charts and maps. And, you know, some of the planning professionals will say, oh, you need to update comp plan first. Like, well, state Iowa's not too strict on that. Basically, you have a comp plan. You don't really need to get distracted by updating that. So basically, we'll just, NICOG can continue to make the maps, charts for the PNZ to look at, analyze, and then we don't know what the time frame for that is, but we'll have a better, you know, no more on next Wednesday. Sounds good. Okay. Does there any more questions? So, and not too much of a headache for you guys. So we, like I got to say, the planning zone, and we just want to not empower them, we just kind of use them to be the middle middle people between you and the public. Are you involved in their meetings then? Or they're on their own? Well I can I mean they can they can request me to attend whatever meeting they want and it's easier now when it's you know remote so they just stay in Mason City but then obviously it's better to meet in person or have a hybrid meetings like what you guys have. So I don't know if they've had hybrid meetings recently but Zoning, yeah. zone, been, okay, hybrid, yeah, for, so, yeah, with the wind turbines, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so, yeah, I know unincorporated areas and driving, especially in the winter, it's not as easy, but it's preferred to these days, you know, these days that have the hybrid meetings, so it's very able to help with that. So, all the, I, all, uh, I can, I don't know what their agenda is, but I don't know if they want to add more and. Jeff just sent it to me yesterday, I think. I need to post it on the website. So it'll be on the website probably today. Okay, yeah. So I, yeah, they sent it to me. I should have looked at it. I was like, drive off my car. I'm like, I should have looked at their agenda. <laughs> so. so basically, if, are, are we the ones that are supposed to ask them to do countywide zoning? They, I mean, basically, I think it's something they should have already. I know you guys have been focused on wind turbines. It's something they should have already been, you know, continually talking about. But. Right. Well, I mean, basically, what starts the process? If we did go that route, you know, do we have to engage them to do that, or if they come to us and say, you know, we've just had the discussion of countywide zoning? It's usually so. Uh, in most counties, it's done engaged by the zoning administrator would engage them, writes the reports, gives the staff gives the recommendation, but then you get to other jurisdictions and staff aren't allowed to give recommendations all ran by the elected officials appointed officials so it kind of depends on the culture of the jurisdiction Man, that, that is on the call if you want to ask me yeah well yeah kind of, matt duvet do you know any idea um i you know just based on the meetings with the zoning commission they have talked about you know looking into um county-wide zoning based on having a county-wide zoning wind ordinance. So I don't know where Jeff was directed, if it was from you guys or maybe from NIACOG that it might be a better idea to look at county-wide zoning instead of just one ordinance that would affect the whole county. And the issue is in like the general planning practice, you wanna have the updated comp plan first. And that might be the way Jeff's thinking. Yep. Updated plan first, then do the countywide zoning, but then it's kind of in state Iowa. State Iowa code allows you to have more flexibility because you do have currently have a comp plan that's 14 years old, but we have jurisdictions that have 40 year old comp plans. And I know counties are more, you know, you get more scrutinized legally than, you know, city Algona or you know, Northler or something. But sure. Yeah. Some people are going to work on the comp plan when they got back together. Right. Yeah, no, that was. That was one of the things we've discussed last year, you know, because it hadn't been touched since 09, yeah. whatever, when it was pretty much drafted, I think. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, because ideally you don't want, you know, general practices, you don't want meeting to go beyond two hours when it's planning zoning. Right. You, know, you want to train, you don't want to, you know, push people off the commission because they think the meetings are too long. So, right. Yeah. So we just don't want to, it's more of an issue of just taking up their time, but it's important stuff for them to address. Because mm -hmm. yeah. otherwise, if they don't address it, you know, your meetings are going to be, become super long. And we have enough of a problem as yeah. it is getting yeah. participants for a lot of these yeah. committees and boards. And then and stuff, when it's an so. unincorporated area, it's even harder. Right. Okay. So your suggestion is? I say, I mean, dress comp plan and zoning could be dressed simultaneously. You don't have to wait for one to be done before you go on to the other. So I think that I think that's why I can say the recommendation is. So regardless, we just think you still continue working on updating the comp plan. Yeah. But um, zoning can be done before that's done. Yep. If need be. So yeah, because there's all these different steps in the comp plan. So first off, you want to get all the charts and maps done before you think the plan is for you know staff or county staff to discuss mm -hmm. the SWOT analysis, you know, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and then you know, go from there. Right. And then tactically, we still wouldn't touch that two miles outside of any community that has that extended zoning, right? So I, so you guys have to the right, so you're considering what the communities want. Okay. So I think you you guys have, so usually what the cities do with the county is uh, you set the extraterritorial review you know, agreement, but it's you guys are ultimately deciding that, but often supervisors will just automatically accept what the cities want. You don't want to start fights with the city. Right. Well, because I just know we've got a few towns around that do it. I don't know if it's all of them. Yeah, Manly. So that's another that's another part of this puzzle is Manly's updating their ordinance and then they need a, and I think you serve on their PNZ. Mm -hmm. Who's okay. PNZ? I knew one of you, someone said on, one of you. I'm were. on board of adjustment. Okay, one of you, yeah. How yeah. they do that just because they have, currently it's not zoned outside of city limits, so they have to. They don't have to, but they want to. Right. So that's part, another part of the puzzle, but basically the solution is that the county, I mean, the county will just accept what it comes from the planning zone on that side. Okay, that's a good okay. If you guys don't like what they have, you can you know, override that basically. Right, but yeah. They say, do you want to start a fight with the city? Yeah, don't need more fight. There's that invisible border there that, you know, there is something, but you still don't need to burn it down. So, okay. Matt DeVay, do you have any questions for Matt O'Brien while he's here? Or? No, I don't. I think we'll probably shed a lot of light on some of this stuff on February 2nd at our meeting. So, sounds good. All yes. right. If I agree, we'll know a lot more after yeah. Wednesday night. So, okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Here's some extra copies of it. Perfect. Don't forget your books. Oh, I got a little <laughs> folio wherever I said it. Right there. All right. right. So, just nothing else. I will take a motion to adjourn. Is that it? Right. Just looking at the agenda. Uh, Get your stuff. Upcoming stuff. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty well covered, I think. Are we doing a budget workshop after today? At the afternoon. Right. We don't we don't have to today, but oh, I'm hoping at least next week. Sorry, I just I didn't see WHW on there, but it's on the it's on page there. above. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, the sorry, there's for it. All right. I uh I'll move to adjourn. There's I'll second it. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. More paper. Yes. Uh,